Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we are looking in more detail at the USS Wichita, the Tier 8 Tech Tree Heavy Cruiser on the American Tech Tree line. And uh, I just want to check something. Yes. So, <laughs> if you have a quick look here, you can see that uh, she's called the. Uh, she is of the Wichita class according to. Uh, Wargaming, which isn't quite correct because there was no Wichita class because there was only one, ever one ship. So uh, she was the last of the treaty cruisers because the treaties, while limiting the amount of, and I haven't talked about London Naval Treaty yet, but well, they are, I will be making a video about that at some point. But uh, it, besides just limiting the tonnage, also in, eventually limited the sheer amount of cruisers that somebody could build. So this was the last one. And uh, she was initially thought to be as a successor of the New Orleans class, but that hasn't hadn't really happened at the time they decided to take the whole of a Brooklyn and uh, upgrade it somewhat, uh, improve it somewhat, stick 203mm guns on it and call it a heavy cruiser. The most interesting thing, for me at least, I, I mean, there's a, there's always a lot of interesting stuff to talk about American cruisers and their their activities during World War II. But uh, the the one thing that I'm kind of curious that I was kind of curious here uh, that I, uh, I found very interesting is the change in guns because these are very different guns. The original 203 millimeter guns on the heavy cruisers were quite chunky, quite heavy in their turret. And the had dispersion problems. <laughs> Definitely had dispersion problems. Whereas the uh, I think a, I think Wichita gets the Mark Twelve as compared to the Mark the original Mark Nine turrets that everybody started off with, uh, and the Mark Twelves are were significantly lighter and uh, had individually mounted barrels, so they were uh, which was greatly helping with their dispersion as well and uh, were sort of a step towards the more autoloader designs that came in the later cruisers. So uh, this is sort of the, the last of the last of a line, but also the first of, an, of a line of newer designs that would eventually then lead to the Baltimores. The Wichita herself did actually end up surviving the war, but uh, was unfortunately, unfortunately scrapped in the 1950s. So, American heavy cruisers have not been upgraded since, uh, or have not been upgraded much since the the game launched. This is one of the original lines, and uh, tier eight is sort of where it gets serious, right? Where you gotta say, you know, <laughs> the grind's getting long, uh, the ship's getting expensive, and uh, tier eight is uh, more difficult just also by the sheer amount of very, very good premium ships and uh, generally a lot of players liking tier eight sort of as the sweet spot between the more competitive top tiers and the somewhat less competitive lower tiers. Tier eight traditionally has been sort of the, the spot where everybody likes to play. So for something to be in tier eight, it needs to kind of prove itself. Can, what can the Wichita do in that regard? Well, let, her, let us compare her. Uh, to the New Orleans at tier 7, the immediate predecessor. At least in-game, nothing's really changed very much. We have we have a, an extra rapid reload, we have an extra defensive AA, but it's still only a def one And we have a better armor, uh, somewhat, I mean a little, <laughs> the Citadel protection, really. Everything else is uh, it's not you're still hull wise not that much different from a light cruiser. Uh, she is a little bit less maneuverable. This is a much larger ship as well than the New Orleans. And uh, the guns are starting to be fun because these are the Mark 12s as compared to the Mark 9s. They were not firing super heavy shells just yet. I think that was only later on the Baltimores where they got these. But in game, we see that we do. Uh, we, we get a bump in in range and alpha damage, and we get a very definite two second faster reload. Uh, like I said, it's a very it's a very linear progression from tier seven onto tier ten. The secondaries are well, technically technically they are um, they should be the same as as on a uh, as on a Brooklyn, but slightly different arranged. But uh, the, they are the famous uh, 38 caliber length, 127 mils, 
and uh, have a bit better damage, bit better range. And in return, also, we're starting to see some AA that's actually becoming workable. Still, I would have liked to see a bit more on the on the large caliber AA, uh, especially given the change in the secondary guns, because those, these 127 mils should have been dual purpose. The concealment's a bit worse given the larger size. But other than that, not an awful lot has changed. So it's still sort of the same. It's still sort of the same ship. Uh, and the same play style as you have in tier 7. It is an assault cruiser, so most of the time you will be playing close to island cover, uh, you, uh, as opposed to behind island cover, but, which you can, but uh, in, an, in a more aggressive style you will usually be using your forward gun turrets more, and uh, do what you can to do damage. Now, uh, you really get... And I don't even know why I chose this. <laughs> I think I think the 15% fire and flooding, yeah. Um, you do get the choice, really, between 1% uh, hit points, which isn't an awful lot, 7% uh, torpedo damage reduction, which doesn't really help you, and 7% fire and flooding resistance, or 15% fire and flooding resistance. You could be tempted to build this ship for, you know, fire and flooding resistance. Let's have a quick detour on how fire and flooding resistance works. Uh, fire and flooding resistance both acts as a counter or saving throw in some fu function. We don't know exactly how it works. If it's a factor, that's the percentage that gets reduced of the actual uh, of the actual fire chance, or if it's a if it's a saving throw of some way. But uh, it, it it acts to counter potential fires and floods. But it also reduces the damage taken from fires and floods. So uh, you could be tempted to build for that. Although with a 20% base value, it's probably not worth it because the percentages aren't additive, they're multiplicative, so it's not a huge amount. That said, torpedo damage reduction is even less useful because you don't have, you don't really have any, and 1% hit points honestly isn't really going to give you anything. It's like 300 hit points extra. You're not gonna, you're not gonna survive any any longer because of that. So uh, the 15% fire and flooding resistance is actually it's not a great choice, but it's the the least bad choice. I would have loved to have better um, uh, elite bonuses here as well. In, in general, I think honestly these ships can do with a little bit of assistance and uh, one thing I could imagine to do here would be to give them the air defense alert 2 to give a 100% bonus on uh, on both large and small caliber AA and make them more viable in, in their AA role and less pure assault cruisers. But uh, so that that would definitely be something, or just uh, buff the uh, the base value of the AA a little bit. But uh, this is what we've got to work with for now, and uh, that's that. So uh, setup wise, I've already mentioned the unfortunate <laughs> fire and flooding resistance elite bonus that you get. Uh, if you are planning to keep the ship and want to put a historical camouflage onto it, you get. Uh, uh, you you get a standard, a relatively standard set of improvements with a couple of hit points, main battery firing range, which is much appreciated as usual on American heavy cruisers because their range isn't the greatest. Uh, large caliber AA range, which is also decent to have, and uh, the equally useless torpedo damage reduction, which really doesn't make a big difference. If you get hit by torpedoes in these things, then it's going to hurt either way. So. Could you set this up as an AA cruiser? I wouldn't, honestly, because, uh, well, the Cleveland exists at tier 8, really, and um, you have better things to do because it's, it's really all about the guns. So in the first slot, I am actually now going with the uh, dispersion mod because while the dispersion, and I haven't looked this up, I might have to check the values on CIC, but while the dispersion was improved in, in real life, I'm not sure how much that is reflected in in-game. And other than that, it's the, the the standard setup. You could be tempted to go in main battery mode two, and uh, to get the to get the reload down, especially in conjunction with the rapid reload. But uh, you do risk losing your turrets, and uh, especially if you're playing bow in, you generally only have two of them to work with, which means uh, you then either have to burn a damage control, or you have to use captain skills or other modules to compensate for that and to get your turrets back up. 
Now I have played with, again, the usual two sets, one with just standard consumables, uh, regular camouflage, regular commander, and uh, I've moved Kincaid over from the New Orleans, uh, the exact same setup for extra A, and uh, the improved extinguisher for a less damage taken from fires. And uh, yes, I am sticking with the APCS, despite Kincaid actually having an improved IFAG, but uh, these are 200 millimeter shells. This isn't going to make them penetrate that much better. Uh, whereas the armor piercing, especially at higher tiers, can be really, really monstrous if you use it wisely and uh, can do a lot of damage. So improved penetration on armor piercing is, I think, generally the right way to go with this here. And the horizontal protection expert is a no-brainer. All right, so two games. One game just with what you would normally have if you were grinding the ship up to tier 10 and you were planning to just sell it again. And the, I like this ship, I'm going to put money into it and max it out to everything I can possibly give it set up. We are in an almost flat out tier 8 game this time around. In, base, uh, in encounter on base captured mode as usual. I don't think encounter has uh, a domination mode or anything else. So we are facing Anhalt, Amagi, Monarch, Edinburgh, Shapayev, Cleveland, and a single destroyer being the Jervis Nocarius, uh, which is is well good good and bad. <laughs> I mean, you, you if you're a cruiser player and you have a defensive AA, it's always kind of nice to actually get uh, get some action and shoot some planes down. At the same time, uh, the AA on the American heavy cruisers is a bit dated and uh, it would always be nice to have that a little improved, but uh, that's what we've got to work with. Anyway, North Carolina over there, and uh, you don't necessarily want to be sailing out in the open in these things. It's always generally a good idea to get yourself close to an island that you can uh, disengage from, because if, uh, yeah, if the enemy team gets to spot you, and they will because your range isn't the greatest, uh, enemy battleships tend to have a tendency to shoot at you, and uh, American heavy cruisers do not react, or cruisers in general, do not react very well to being shot at. So that's where you have to compensate for your comparatively short range with positioning. So I'm positioning myself here next to this island, but I already know that there is going to be a destroyer coming down this flank because of the spawn. It's uh, I think it's usually, it's usually uh, cross. And we have spotted the Shapayev. So while I'm trying to lob across the island, there he is. I see you there. I see your smoke screen. While I'm trying to lob across the island, uh, I think I may be able to push a little bit further into a slightly more aggressive position. Uh, folks, be careful. There's a Jervis over there. Uh, so given that I have neither radar nor sonar, um, I, I am going to try and get into a slightly better position to start shooting at that thing. Now, uh, the the eternal question with cruisers uh, what is what is the uh, what is the ammunition i should be loading and uh, the, the 203 millimeter heavy cruiser rules still applies you can see i do perfectly fine doing he uh, doing full penetrations against the jervis at long range and generally the distance where that st where that stops working is about 5 to 6 kilometers anything closer than that and you're going to have to switch to high explosive okay the jervis has gone undetected uh, let's see if I can uh, do something about the Cleveland, and then we're going to be backing off behind the island again and going bow in towards that Anhalt, uh, whom... I don't think he's AFK, because that's not, a, that's not a spawn position. I mean, maybe he just turned the ship sideways and then went, went AFK? Or he's just sort of sitting there? I'm not sure what's, what his game is, but uh, I am not spotted right now. Okay, if, as long as I can keep <laughs> keep the back of my of my turret uh, behind uh, behind island cover, but I think the Anhalt is gone AFK, so I'm going to try and move up one more island. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to hunt down that Jervis early on, if possible, to allow my team to push further. And it's also an extremely threatening proposition yeah. against the Shapayev over there, who is fortunately firing high explosive at me. Okay, there comes the Jervis. And uh, Shappi now can no longer remain in this position. I'm outside Shappi's uh, torpedo range, obviously not Jervis, but uh, <laughs> he's lucky that my rapid reload's on cooldown. And not for long anymore. Uh, there comes the fire from the Jervis, there comes the fire from the Shapayev. But 
Now, now unfortunately, he's no longer giving me broadside, but I can still start using the rapid reload and then go chasing after the Jervis. Yep, there come his torpedoes. I knew these were coming. Might be taking one here. Yep, that's why I've been holding off with the damage control. Okay, uh, there's also the Cleveland coming. So we, we are getting a lot of unwanted attention and my team has decided, you know what? Pushing is overrated. We're all gonna head back down towards baseline. <laughs> Ah, oh, it is a sad display these days. Okay, that means I'm in a slight pickle here because uh, I've got <laughs> I am suddenly the most forward <laughs> ship that you know uh, in, in that the enemy team has to shoot at. Which unfortunately the Jervis keeps firing at me. I mean he does that because he knows that I damage controlled the flood, so he's trying to set perma fires, which is the right thing to do. But uh, that also keeps him spotted. Now who's coming around the corner? Cleveland. Okay, I am running a little low on, on hit points, and if Cleveland was firing armor-piercing, that would be a problem, but it looks like Cleveland's like, ah, you know what, no, I'd rather not. <laughs> uh, there's also a Monarch out there. Okay, uh, the Unhalt seems to be AFK, so let's begin uh, disassembling that Monarch with Extreme Prejudice, and obviously I am low enough on hit points that uh, I need to go bow in. But uh, the Monarch is dead, hasn't managed to kill me because bow in. And as you can see, if you shoot at the, at the vulnerable sections, then you can do a very, very respectable amount of damage against these ships. Okay, the Jervis is still somewhere out there. Uh, yep, there come his torpedoes again. And uh, we will not get hit this time. I don't have anything else to shoot at, so I might as well just uh, shoot at the Unhalt. Oh, no, there, never mind, there's the Jervis. Hello, Mr. Okay, he just smokes up. I have no utility. I'm just going to try and set some fires on the Unhalt because if he's AFK, then we're going to let them burn. Uh, also, I have had issues or instances where AFK ships uh, became not AFK. So sitting right next to an Unhalt when he decides no longer to be a AFK can be a bad thing. So there are probably Jervis torpedoes in the water, so we do need to turn around a little bit. And uh, he is now burning merrily, and I've got the armor piercing loaded. And finally, Almost <laughs> almost at the end of the game, my team has decided that now is probably the time that they need to get across the middle of the map <laughs> and actually start pushing the enemy team, of which there is only three ships left. Well, make that two. Uh, <laughs> oh, come on, really? <laughs> All right, nobody take that. That's one, that one's mine. Nobody take that one. Uh, no, don't you dare. <laughs> That's mine, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, the Cleveland is dead and the Anhalt is dead and we have a Ruffle Stop medal up for grabs, but I'm now engaged with a Jervis. So at this range, high explosive is the weapon of choice because armor piercing will start over penetrating. Obviously, if he has torpedoes, he might be single firing them. Uh, yep, there they come. Okay, so we do need to try and skirt. I might be taking one here. Yep, one. That was okay, that was enough. Where is he? Where are you at? <laughs> Uh, he might still have... Mo uh, no, no, I think he fired his, 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 his spreads. I haven't counted... No, no, there are actually still more torpedoes. Smart, Jervis. But, uh, okay, yeah, that was only ever gonna end one way. And we have managed to survive, <laughs> despite the fact that um, the, my complete team has decided to just head back to base. <laughs> but, you know, uh, it goes that, that sort of shows you how uh, you need to use positioning in these ships because you can't do this out in the open you're gonna get you're, you're gonna get killed but if you can use island positioning to your advantage uh, then you can sort of uh, flank counter if, if one of your team members is pushing like this like what i was doing and you're in a battleship y even if there, there's only one destroyer and it's a jervis it's not like a shimakaze or anything right um or a kagero it might not have been a terrible idea to assist with a push, but, you know, what am I complaining about? <laughs> Gave me a good opportunity to show what you can do with island, uh, with island cover. Which brings us to our second game. This one is the one with all, all the bells and whistles, everything money can buy. And we are in, again, a tier 8 game, except for the enemy Yudachi. We are facing Amagi, Black Bismarck, Vladivostok, a Wichita, a Cleveland, an Akizuki, and a Yudachi. A Black Bismarck is nasty. That's a, I, I, looked, I had to look that up because I generally don't really know what the black ships can do because I tend not to review them because all they get is different ship skills, but that thing's got rapid reload. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> so, let's go. Um, yeah, so this is the fully decked out 
uh, game. Although we do have a King George, a Prince Heinrich, so we get an extra tier 7 on our, our team, but that's okay. Anyway, Hourglass. Uh, I, I think people mentioned in the co comments that they some people don't like this map. Uh, I, I love this map. This map's got some really good positions that you can take. So one thing that I want to do is park myself next to that little island over there, which uh, gives me torpedo protection from the center and uh, potentially also uh, keep, keep, uh, allows me to remain unspotted uh, unless somebody comes down the flank and actually spots me from, from the eastern side of the map. Uh, hello team um, okay <laughs> we already have somebody who is was not into this whole um, okay that's that's a that's an ambitious call uh, with two with two American cruisers out there you probably don't especially that there was a Cleveland you don't want to do that um, so uh, let's let's park ourselves here let the destroyer do the scouting and give the uh, Yuki Kaze on our on our team a bit of fire support whenever something becomes spotted and uh, we can move back we can move forward and hop to the next island if we can be more aggressive uh, we've got the Akizuki where are you okay am I gonna get spotted uh, I am getting spotted interestingly so there might be something out there on the flank still or it could be that I'm just poking out too much but that's a Cleveland and that Cleveland is very dangerous for my destroyers so uh, rapid reload up and let's uh, begin the disassembly of that Cleveland such that my destroyers can make themselves useful and deal with the battleships on the flank here. Uh, I am mildly worried about the uh, our capture circle because there's nobody there. The whole center is empty. There's nothing preventing preventing the enemy team from just sailing through there and, uh, you know, just, just capping us out, really. But uh, what what is that King... What is that King George doing? Uh, okay. Uh, all right, then. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I don't think that's a great idea, but okay, anyway. Uh, I do have both destroyers here. Okay, unsurprisingly, the King George is dead. Uh, we are going to be capped in a minute here, because uh, both enemy destroyers are going to go through the center. You, you people realize that, right? I might have to turn around. But we need to, uh, we need to take care of that Amagi here, and um, I am going to try and, uh, and help my destroyers as much as they can. Okay, Yukikaze. There's an Amagi. Would you mind? Would you mind killing it? Um, I'll help, <laughs> and I'll try to be a distraction. But and I'll try to take care of the Cleveland. I don't think Cleveland wants to come out of there. So let's give it another shot. But uh, if he stays behind that, okay. Uh, I am going to. What? 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 That's an. That's a. That's an Amagi say, sailing in a straight line, and uh, literally just doing nothing else. Okay. Uh, that's gonna hurt, yes. <laughs> the problem is, we're gonna be capped in a second. I need to turn my ship around, I have time to deal with this. And my destroyers have absolutely no interest in dealing with the Amagi. Well, I mean, I, I can do, but uh, I am gonna lose a lot of hit points doing this. So I need to turn the ship around, and now they finally decide that they want to come out. And maybe, maybe help out with the Amagi. Okay, uh, I've lost about half my hit points. But uh, I've, I've, I've given as much as I've taken. And maybe, maybe you guys can now deal with the Amagi? That would be much appreciated. And uh, I, really, I, have, I have no idea where the enemy destroyers are. They should have been capping a minute ago. But uh, apparently they're not that interested. And the Amagi is... See, this is what you're doing in a cruiser. You'll be a distraction for the Amagi. I need my turrets back, please. Uh, you'll be a distraction for the, for the battleships, so that should, that, such that the destroyers can maybe torpedo that thing. And now we're getting some torpedo action here. And I honestly deserve that one because that has cost me half my hit points to make that happen. Okay, um, Yukikaze, you're still sitting uh, sitting behind that island. There's nothing for you to do there. Either you go cap or you go back defend the cap. But um, yeah, now there we go. They're, they're, now they're capping. Uh, yes, I'm surprised it took them that long. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. Uh, uh, it looks like. It looks like our western flank has completely collapsed. Uh, we have taken down the Cleveland and gunned down by a Yukikaze. But uh, if they had counter probably a bit ago, uh, that might have worked better. But uh, it is what it is. Okay, Amagi, excuse me. I am. Why, where are you pointing your guns? There's nothing there. Get to the capture. <laughs> I mean, you can help out at the capture circle. That'd be great. Or shoot at the battleship. That works too. But 
No, well, anyway. Uh, what's left? Uh, Akizuki and Yudachi. Oh, great. <laughs> and I don't have Sonar. Uh, and there, uh, at least one of them is in the capture circle. And there are two. There's a battleship coming down the flank here. So I'm going to switch to high explosive because I am going to engage in close range fight here. Okay, that's a single spread. Uh, that's the Aki. Uh, Yudachi fires uh, fires deep water torpedoes. So, but Aki has has a torpedo reload. So this this doesn't mean yet that that's it. But I'm going to get into the capture circle here and start defending it. Aki smokes up, obviously. I have no radar to counter that, but I see where you are. I mean, I can just follow your traces. And at this range, the... Okay, there comes the second spread, so he has used his torpedo reload. Uh, the problem is, obviously, or well, we can't see you, but I don't know where the Yudachi is. So if he's in here somewhere as well, I do have to be a little bit careful. Okay, Aki has, has left the, cap uh, the capture circle. And uh, oh, there comes the Black Bismarck. Now that's a problem. <laughs> So we are uh, we are ahead on points because we are kill ahead. So all we need to do is not die right now. So if everybody could please not die, that would be that we swell. And one of our ships is actually one of our destroyers is actually capturing. Good job. Uh, so if you could all manage to not die, and then I'll I'll, I'll do my very best here uh, to retake the capture circle. I don't. We're not going to win on capping anymore. We just need to not not die. Like like these Yudachi torpedoes there that I've seen coming a mile away because I know that the Yudachi is somewhere around here because he's got nowhere else to be. Like there he is. <laughs> that's the that's the sort of thing that I meant with not dying. And we have retaken our capture circle, but unfortunately at this point <laughs> uh, the Amagi has now succumbed to the Black Bismarck, who is gonna who is about to take some torpedoes. Uh, the problem being that uh, that Benson is about to go down as well, and uh, that's going to be game. So I'm going to try and do what I can here, but uh, yeah, I mean, even high explosive armor piercing doesn't matter. There's no way I'm going to finish off the Black Bismarck uh, before the timer runs out, and uh, I, I might, I might as well just, I might as well just go ham and uh, I'm losing some shots, some shots. Could, could have used the armor piercing here, but. Uh, wouldn't have managed to kill the Black Bismarck either way, so it doesn't matter. And uh, well played, Black Bismarck. Yeah, um, situational awareness. <laughs> it 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 can be really hard. It can be really hard. But uh, uh, I, I'll try not to complain too much. But <laughs> I think what what this goes what this shows you is uh, the big difference between. Uh, let's say uh, Cleveland and uh, Wichita. Cleveland has a lot more utility because it's got radar and it's got sonar. A, a Wichita does not. Uh, a Wichita has has firepower, definitely, with the 203 millimeter armor piercing, and is an assault cruiser like all the others in her line. Is this is this a good ship or a bad ship? I think it's a good ship, uh, but I might be slightly biased here because I really enjoy assault cruisers. I think for tier 8 it's not a bad ship to have. Uh, she is a little power crept, I feel, especially in the AA field, and could could probably deal do with a nudge here, but in general this is a good assault cruiser, and um, this is a this is a very solid ship, and I think that holds true for a lot uh, for large parts of the American lines. They might not all be exceptional, but there are a lot of them are very very solid ships, and the the Wichita is a very solid assault cruiser that uh, that can hold, that can still hold her own after all these years in tier eight, and uh, as long as you know how to play these things right, and as long as you have the situational awareness to know where exactly you need to be, where you need to go, uh, how to cover yourself with island, how to cover your vulnerable flanks with islands, and uh, you know just how to deal with things as they come up. But if you figure these things out, then I think this is a very enjoyable ship to play. And it does lead to the Des Moines, which is also a very enjoyable ship to play, so you may as well. Anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks, everybody, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.